This segment, let's go ahead and discuss the oxidation number method. So this will be really important when you're first learning how to do oxidation reduction reactions and as you go on through chemistry so that you understand how the charges on different species kind of work. So oxidation number method is also referred to as oxidation states. Um, so you'll hear that come up repeatedly probably in your adventures with this topic. So what is the oxidation number method? Well, it helps us keep track of the electrons that are gained when a substance is reduced and the electrons that are lost when the substance is oxidized. Remember that oxidation and reduction happen together. They're oxidation reduction pairs, if you will. And I put oil rig here as a reminder that oxidation is losing of electrons and reduction is gaining of electrons. So this is always a handy tool to kind of write down to help you keep track of what's happening. So each atom in a neutral molecule or charged species is assigned what we call an oxidation number. And that's the actual charge for a monatomic ion. Remember a monatomic ion, mono meaning just one. So a singular ionic species. So the oxidation number of certain atoms will change in a redox reaction, right? That kind of makes sense because there are electrons being transferred from one species to another. So when oxidation occurs, there's gonna be an increase in the oxidation number. However, when reduction occurs, there's gonna be a decrease in the oxidation number. Again, remember, oxidation is losing of electrons, so an increase in positive charge. Reduction is a gain of electrons, so a decrease in positive charge. So how do we actually assign oxidation numbers? So there are a few rules. Um, there's always exceptions to rules. All of them I won't have a chance to say here, but these are the basics of what you need to know to get you um, started and increase your proficiency with this um, topic. So let's go ahead and see what they are. Understand that it will take you quite a bit of time before you become familiar and this feels like second nature for you. So hopefully you won't get lost and bogged down in the details and just kind of um, be open to learning how to do it. So the first one is for an atom that's in its elemental form, so basically the way you find it on the periodic table, it's gonna have an oxidation number of zero. So for instance, if we're talking about the diatomic chlorine gas, Cl2, each chlorine atom in chlorine gas has an oxidation number of zero. So for the second rule, for a monatomic ion, the oxidation number is gonna equal the charge on the ion. So for instance, group one, your alkali metals, when they, they are oxidized, and so they're going to lose an electron to get a plus one charge. Group two, they're going to lose two electrons to have a plus two charge. Your halogens, group seven, they're gonna gain an electron to have a minus one charge. So our third rule is that nonmetals usually have negative oxidation numbers, although they can sometimes be positive. So overwhelmingly so, they're gonna have negative oxidation numbers. Remember your nonmetals are over to the right hand side of the periodic table. So oxygen, for instance, usually is minus two in both ionic and molecular compounds. The exception for that is a peroxide. And peroxides are O2, two minus. So then hydrogen usually is a plus one when it's in cahoots with a nonmetal. So if you have HCl, for instance, Cl is gonna be minus one, hydrogen is gonna be plus one. However, if you have hydrogen in cahoots with a metal, say sodium, sodium is gonna be plus one, hydrogen is gonna be minus one, we call that a hydride. And then fluorine is negative one. And the last rule is that the sum of the oxidation numbers of all atoms in a neutral compound is zero. And that the sum of the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion equals the charge of the ion. So those, this last rule is probably gonna be the most difficult to remember. So I put up a fairly complicated example of that just so that we can see how it kind of works. So Cr2O7, chromium and oxygen, with a two minus charge. Okay, so we wanna know what the charge on the chromium is. So we know that the oxygens are gonna have a two minus each, right? Oxygen is two minus. So that means we have, the oxygen is contributing a charge of negative 14. But we know the overall charge on the polyatomic is two minus, which means we have a charge of negative 12 that's unaccounted for. 
So that means that if we have two chromiums, that each of those chromiums must be a positive 6 charge in order to counterbalance the minus 12 charge. Okay, so that's kind of how we learn how to work with the charges on polyatomics and to understand oxidation numbers.